Okay, we are putting the top eight deck list package together. In the meantime, Will and I are going to go through the bracket and talk about what we think, about what we saw. And in the meantime, also, I want to point out or remind you that um, if you want to follow us on Twitch or Facebook or Twitter or any of these social media platforms, that'd be great. Uh, we do have an event uh, in March that has not been announced yet. It's going to be announced. Uh, well, it's going to be finalized, but it's going to be announced on Wednesday. So uh, if you're interested in playing or watching or following along, if you're following us on any of those platforms, you'll hear about it there first. So that's something I probably should mention more often, but we got it done now. Okay, so Will, the bracket, let's go. Yeah. Start at the top left, Drew Christensen playing Burn versus Adam Wallace playing Naya midrange. Uh, I will throw out my feeble you know, opinion that is not well-educated, then you can correct me. All right, uh, burn versus Naya Midrange. I'm guessing Naya Midrange is going to put down creatures that have more toughness than Burn wants to deal with, but enough to disrupt the creatures, and that Burn kind of runs into a wall and loses. Yeah, that, that looks like more or less what's going to happen. Um, Good man. It's, it's uh, you know, obviously it's possible for for Naya to get sort of steamrolled, especially as Drew. Do we know is Drew the first seed? Is the higher player the the player on the play? I assume they are. If the if that's true, then we have. Uh, one versus eight, and then Burn will be on the play, and like maybe that can uh, like bolting an Arbor Elf or something can slow Naya down enough. I where... can get this. Yes, the uh, the Drew Christensen is the number one overall overall seed. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's probably close. I think Burn might be a little ahead, but uh, be just because they have the play, though, you know. Sure. Like, yeah. Like having the play is just so important. All right, well, we do. We will get the deck lists up when we move into the matches. 2-7 uh, on the top right. Uh, we have Dredge versus Sean Ryder playing Mono Green Tron. Now, that's a matchup where I'm the expert, probably. Yes, I, and, I would defer um, to you here. I'm going to say that historically, Tron is going to be significantly favored. Um, that may or may not still be the case if... if Dredge has Damping Spheres and Cyborg, which a lot of people randomly do now. That can disrupt things a little bit. Uh, there's Ghost Quarter that can get recurred by Life from Loam. That can be a problem. And sometimes Dredge can just get a great start and race to the wind. I mean, the uh, as we've seen a few times, the Ox of Agonis really turbocharges some of those openings. But Tron has Sweepers. It has Exile Effects. And generally, Dredge will give it enough time to, to get set up. So... In that matchup, Dredge uh, gets to go first. I would rather be on the Tron side of that one. You have any thoughts on that one? You've played some Dredge. You've played maybe a little Tron. You've certainly seen it enough. You've seen it enough. What do you think? Yeah, I think I agree. I'd be interested in seeing the specifics of Sean's deck list. Uh, right. Like, how, how many relics he has in his main deck and his yeah. sideboard, and, like, like how much hate he has in his board. If he has Carlin the Great Creator, that's a huge deal, because if he has Carlin the Great Creator, he's almost certainly packing a Graft Digger's Cage and a Tormod's Crypt, which are obviously going to be quite potent in game one um, and gives yeah. him uh, a much easier access. Like, Karn, Exile, your land is good on turn three, but, like, Dredge can beat that, you know? Yeah, uh, certainly. Well, is a little tougher, but, like, yeah. Karn and, and uh, Ugin is quite good. Karn yeah. and Oblivion Stone are kind of whatever, you know? It's yeah. manageable. Yeah, the, uh, and again, I, so I'm maybe biasing, too, because you're right. We do need to look at the specific deck list, because I'm biasing it from my perspective. Like, right now I'm playing three Relics main deck. Yeah, you um, got three because, Relics, then you're chilling. Yeah, because that's one of the holes, I think, that, that Tron can fall apart in. That is beatable if, if you want to. So yeah, there's three Alex main deck and four Worm Coil engines and three Ugans. So I have in my current yeah. building deck, there are the tools to win, but uh, that that doesn't mean that everyone is going to play that exact same build. So, uh, but but even then, I, I would still say I would give the edge to Tron in that matchup. So if we go back to I the agree. bracket and we can see the next one up, we have Josh Feliciano with Blue Eye Control versus Justice Wright and Green White Heliod. This one. I don't have as much experience watching this. My estimate is that um, Path to Exile's ability to break up the combo will be an issue. And without the combo, I don't think that the assorted creatures are going to be enough to beat the blue-white deck. So that's that's how I would expect that one to play out. Uh, what do you think? Uh, I agree. I think... <sighs> I think it's close. Uh, a big, big factor here is that Spike Peter plus Heliod is not going to be game because uh, Josh is going to be able to chase ultimate or to fairy and continue talking to fairy and exile all of, all of justice's permanence. Right. Um, 
So you just have to keep the walking ballista off the board. But Ranger Captain of Eos can be a huge pain yeah. for for control um, because you can just play it and then, or like, like you play it and then as soon as you set up your combo, you just sacrifice it. So you have to path it, and yeah. it tutored for your combo piece. So it kind of it kind of did it all. Like it, it ate a path to exile because it has to, otherwise you just die. Uh, mm-hmm. And it got the walking ballista in your hand, so it's just it's usually a very good um, very good card in that matchup and. Um, yeah, I, I assume that uh, that Justice will be playing four copies of Ranger Captain. Yeah, you're right about that. And and we were uh, for viewers' sake, uh, we, we were discussing during the break uh, how the last time Will did coverage with us, we had a, a green white Helia deck that actually was tripped up and lost because of giving protection from with Giver Runes, giving protection from Path to Exile disrupted the Helia tr- uh, activation. Yeah. So certainly. Path to Exile versus any non-white removal, the the white removal spells are harder for the green white to, to dance around, um, in in that specific way. But uh, okay, so we'll see how that plays out. And then our feature match is going to be number three, Jamie Robertson playing humans versus number six seed David Goldfarb playing Mardu Pyromancer. Now this match is probably there's going to be this one is not going to end quickly, I wouldn't think. We have the deck list ready, so we can put that up if we want to. But there's going to be a lot of back and forth in this uh, match, I would think. Both decks going somewhat wide. Humans going bigger uh, with some flyers, but Pyromancer with the Pyromancer deck having some larger cards with huge impacts like Kroxa. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Usually, uh, humans will get sort of preyed on by these like removal spell decks that just play like mm-hmm. twenty doom blades and then like some resilient threats and card advantage. Um, but uh, this this Marty deck is a little clunky, right? Like we talked about how much we like season pyromancer early, but uh, earlier. But like if you only have like one doom blade or whatever, humans has they play like thirty something creatures. You know what I mean? Yeah. Usually, like thirty six creatures, forty three vials, twenty lands is normal. Um, and you will uh, you'll run into spots where like you couldn't kill everything. And then you're left with these like really, really clunky cards like Susan Pyromancer and like Kroxa does not impact the board at all. And uh, Jamie came with two copies of Militia Bugler, which is something that's going to really help him out here in these uh, in this fair kind of matchup where every card matters. And it's just going to be a 2-3 body that probably draws you a Thalys Lieutenant or maybe a mm-hmm. Phantasmal Image to copy your Militia Bugler, uh, which can maybe get you something else like a Reflector Mage for your Kroxa. And then suddenly you have three two threes and they have nothing. And it's all from the Militia Bugler. And you're able to leverage those like double spell turns really well with your four copies of Ether Vial, and uh, you know the games go long, so the the mana inefficiency doesn't matter too much, or at least as much as it does normally. Um, but yeah, I I think that I would probably say the Marty deck's a favorite, but Jamie's definitely got a shot. Okay, sure, yeah, and that is good. I'm glad you pointed it out because the uh, the other human deck that we saw today um, didn't have Militia Bugler, or else I wasn't aware of it. So that will lead to. Um, yeah, you're right. A bigger board presence, and yeah, you know, I was saying that you know the Mardu decks can go wide, but the Humans decks can go wide with larger creatures. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I liked I liked your take on that. So maybe maybe you're right. Maybe the Humans has a bit of an edge there. Anyway, uh, so we can go back to the bracket real quick, and then it sounds like the players are ready to go, so we can get this top eight kicked yeah. off. Register one lightning bolt. Is that right? Yes. Four okay. fail push, one lightning bolt. Well, okay. Fair enough. All right. Well. That is okay. not going to be not uh, ideal. desirable here. No. would prefer more of those, but, uh, you know, got to make some concessions for all the matchups. And so See, can't that's, be that's, that's why you got to bring in fresh eyes. Because, you know, I just look at this and I look at kind of the, the generic stuff I expect to see there. And, and you know, look for the outliers. And lightning bolt was there. Lost over it. Didn't realize it's a singleton, a singleton, because you know, singleton lightning bolt, yeah, pretty uncommon, I would say. What is? Okay. It's a little unusual, yeah. All right. While while uh, to go ahead and take us into the match whenever they're ready to start. In the meantime, will what is probably the most? The, what's the staple card that you see as a one of that you would never expect to see that you? But you actually like, so for example, this one lightning bolt might just be the record holder, but not counting this. What's a card that you see one of sometimes that that surprises you that seems like you could be a three or four of? Um, mind? Hmm. that could be a three or four of that's often a one of it's kind of hard to say sure, I know. Um, I'm, not, I'm not here to ask the easy questions yeah that's that's fair uh, I, like... I always thought like 
uh, people would play more like hour or uh, more hour promises in those like okay. big uh, green cool. decks, the, the Omnath decks last format. Mm -hmm. But everybody seemed to just be content with like one copy of hour of promise. I thought right. you know you don't have to max on those, but like yeah. you know I, I expect to have more than one a lot of the time. Like it seemed ooh, no one drop here on six cards for Jamie. That is not ideal. But you know that that is probably my answer. I guess it's just like yeah. hour of promise in those Omnath decks. I would expect to my see like. Like My answer was going to be uh, sweepers, like Wrath of Gods, oh, or that, sure. that type of thing. That's something like you reasonably could play three or four, but but you, a lot of times you just see one. Yeah, yeah. A, a big one for me when I first started was like, why, why doesn't everybody just have four Elspeth Suns champion in their <laughs> control decks? Like sure. this card is insane, you know. And it's <laughs> like, I was like, why, why, why does not? I, I do like this keep from Jamie, but you really want to one drop with humans, yeah. but, like going to five against these. Uh, no, I get it. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. Yeah, I, and yeah, I mean, I'm with you on the other thing too. I mean, I I won in uh, Star City Open in Standard with three Elspeth Sun Champions in my deck. It was great. Yeah, and that, yeah. That, I mean, you don't want to draw that many, and like teams don't always go to turn six. And uh, yeah, I, I think I maybe would have preferred to play Ziggurat here just in case you want to name something else. And also maybe then uh, like there still is a possibility that there's a vial in your hand or something that's stuck there, but it really does not matter. And we're talking about like the smallest of edges if there is, if there is even an edge to playing. Uh, sure. Yeah. yeah. So you're talking about disguising the fact that you have a vial stuck in your hand. Just yeah. It's, you it's, don't have a shirt. Yeah. That makes sense. Basically nonsense. Uh, the biggest thing is no, just, like, it's not nonsense though. It's yourself, just, it's just know? the little things. And like for, I mean, for a lot of people that really get into a deck or, or into the, the overall magic overall, but most common, I feel like it's with one deck or another. It is really cool to learn all of like the little tiny edges in a deck. Yeah. And that's certainly that is one. You cannot bluff having an uncastable ether vial if you lay out the Cavern of Souls first. Yeah, so and it matters almost never. And I do like that we're playing this Lieutenant out. I think not playing this Lieutenant out would be insanity. It sucks that yeah. we have to do it. Like you want to play it and put counters on stuff, right? But yeah. Having no, no creature on board on turn two is just not acceptable at all. So right, yeah. This is so really we need uh, oof. Another discard spell. Probably going to take the bugler if I had to guess. Um, but maybe the image, and you can just hope that he bricks mm -hmm. on land because it's the only castable spell there. Because we're we don't have land three rolled up. I mean, if we do take the image and the land comes off, then we're. I mean, that's Jamie's actually decently developed. So. Yeah, I do kind of like taking one of the three drops because if they play, the, if the image gets cast next turn, is that are we really in trouble? So the thing, oh man, oh, do we have another discard spell? If we have, if we have like a lightning bolt, oh, I do not like fetching main phase there at right. all because right. if we because if we draw a three drop here, it, it's so scary to play this image, right? Because yeah. we just have a lightning if if, if uh, we just have a lightning bolt in hand, it's over, it's all over. We get the image, we get the lieutenant, it, it's done. We we yeah. drew a land, I want to play bugler anyway, so it doesn't matter. But like. They're fetching main phase to save time is like that's a huge deal because like from uh, from Jamie's perspective, like it's terrifying to play an image into an untapped bloodstained mire, right? Like yes. when you only have one creature to copy, like you could just yes. get blown out of, of the water. Like yeah. you probably yeah, have totally. to, but you have to do it anyway. But like, yeah, and we're 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 on. Uh, I mean, during the Swiss, the players are on twenty five minute clocks. In the top eight, they're on forty minute clocks. So there's no there's no time pressure. There's no anything. It's just yeah, being casual about it. Uh, and yeah. costing yourself at least the your opponent having to sweat it out a little bit. And okay, Pyromancer comes in, so image on Bugler is going to work here. And this, I mean, <clears throat> Jamie had a pretty poor start off a of Mulligan and discard spell. Yeah. And this is going to develop into you know, I'm doing okay. A non embarrassing we, offense. No, and we might we might be able to phantasmal image this season Pyromancer. Like, play this, like, draw a land, sure. we play Hierarch, we play Image, yeah, we get to draw two cards, cool. you know? Or we drew a Lieutenant. Okay, let's 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 cast Lieutenant and Hierarch instead, and then we can we can do that later. Okay, we're going to cast Image, I guess. I definitely don't want to copy the Pyromancer now. I do not want to discard these. We're going right. to copy Bugler. Okay. I think I would have erred on the side of just getting my guys bigger, so, like, uh, so David isn't able to have mm -hmm. any good double blocks. Because right now, if we attack... It sucks, right? Like, we, he puts all of his tokens on the lieutenant. And we, we lose the lieutenant for the season power master. So now we, now we just, like, yeah, we just didn't attack. We didn't attack yeah. at all. <laughs> so, like, I really yeah, want to push the damage this turn. Um, so you're saying, so you would have played lieutenant and hierarch, had larger creatures, and then with I the image just, left over. Smack, the, just shove with everybody. Yeah, and, like, I, I definitely get that. The 
incentive for playing the image when your opponent is tapped out does exist, though, because you lose the opportunity to get... Well, I guess that was only when there was like, only one creature in play. Now with the board full of stuff, it wouldn't really matter as much. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Like, we're going to copy a lieutenant, we're going to get a bugler, we can maybe get a seasoned pyromancer. Like, we're, we're going to get something pretty juicy out of this image yeah. almost, almost every time. But uh, I think that David will still be in a... Or, uh, I'm sorry, I think that Jamie will be in a good position this game, like, because we're going to play the lieutenant this turn. Uh, and I like... Whoa. If we're not going to play the lieutenant this turn. This, this seems like... This is very conservative. Yeah, so now we're... Because a lot of the potential... Uh, well, okay, well... We might just be thinking we have to snipe the equipment that was just pulled up. Yeah, that's probably... This is actually probably good. Uh, this yeah. is probably a, a wise wise decision um you got a better skull uh and you probably can't go over the better skull so yeah this is, this is actually better that's my bad um so this free booger waits on the stack for, yeah i don't think david can i think anything david would do would likely be after the free booger comes into play yes yeah. well, it depends because uh, David's in the spot where if he has only one removal spell to go with the batter skull in his hand, then he really wants to use it on the freebooter because you want the batter skull to stabilize all the creatures. Mm -hmm. But then there's a world where it doesn't stabilize the creatures. You know the noble hierarchs face up, so you know that the champion's going to be at least a three three. Uh, and then if and then on the following turn from now, if Jamie has any human to follow up, then it's a four four and trades with the token and the lieutenant always out outsizes the batter skull. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, we'll go ahead. We will we'll get a look alongside Jamie at what. I can't imagine it, we just let this resolve. I guess we do if we just have two removal spells. I'm pretty surprised if we had more than one one mana removal spell in hand because if we had a one mana removal spell like two turns ago, we would not have fetched main phase. Okay, so we do want we value the batter skull really highly, which makes sense. We want to brick these ground guys. Mm -hmm. um, Play, right. Playing the freebooter there is like almost for sure, right? Right? Like that seems. So, what do we have attacks wise here? Just the lieutenant? Yeah, I think we can only shove for seven and force a chump on the elemental. I mean, not force a chump, but I can't imagine not taking the chump block with an elemental here if we just send with only lieutenant. If we shove with, uh, the champion never gets in because the blocks are too. Like, don't get, trading it for a season power mancer and elemental is horrible. Mm. Uh, it's not yeah, and it's. Uh, it's tempting to wait for the lieutenant to just pump everything else next turn, but then the batter skull is going to be in the way, and it's they're not going to be able to attack anyway. But yeah, at least certainly. the lieutenant has to go in here. Yeah, the lieutenant goes in every time, uh, and I don't think you can ever send in buglers because I don't think you ever want to trade a bugler off here because it's going to be three four next turn. But I mean, it's going to get you send, if you although like let's see, I mean That's you would send. Bugler. I guess if you're sending more than lieutenant, it's probably everything, right? If it's everything, and then we. Double block the champion and chump the lieutenant. We just take four, yeah. kill our champion, and then the board is like our one big threat, a pair of two threes that are bricked by a batter skull, and a stone forge mystic. Okay, yeah. so he decides to go for the everything. Okay. Yeah. So this that would mean that the batter skull would be potentially having to block if the board gets cleared here. Yeah, so I think these are the clear blocks. I assume we'll put an elemental on the Thalia's lieutenant. Um, and then just take the four. Yeah, but this puts us in a spot. Does this put us in a spot where the Barrow Skull has to chump block next turn? Or, well, actually, the, sto I don't maybe think the, so. the Stoneforge would chump block and drop the Barrow Skull, but that doesn't really put you in a great spot either. No, it, it would be more life to just block the. Yeah, because now we just go to nine and we get to eat a Bugler, gain four, and we can also play this Dark Confront from hand, which can chump. Um, yeah, well, you have to, because the Lieutenant's going to be lethal next turn by itself, right? It'll be nine. Uh, it's only nine. If we oh, draw sorry, two other lieutenant or the... no, wait. We could we could send it only the lieutenant and get the higher the exalted trigger, but it goes to eight, right? Right. So if we send yeah, now, so if we sent it by so... itself, it would be nine. Yeah, but then we could just jump block with the yeah. Then we could block the yeah, yeah, yeah. So then we probably are incentivized to do some other stuff. I assume we'll probably just play dark confidant and pass here. If we have any removal spell, it's it's disastrous. Which is blood crypt, which is decidedly not a removal spell. Um, this game's going to be close. I think that the advantage is pretty good for David, though. Uh, man, this Meddling Mage. Uh, open deck lists, Meddling Mage. Mm -hmm. This is a spot where a lot of people would name Lightning Bolt, right? 
Uh, but we, but we know <laughs> we true. know we know that David is only playing one lightning bolt and four copies of Fatal Push. So it, naming lightning bolt here, I think, would be a huge mistake because you want to name the rules for he's most likely to draw. Right. He's used one. Yeah, now you can see he's, pull, he's pulling it out. He's one lightning bolt. <laughs> not mm. not naming that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, one push is gone, but that's probably. St- I mean, I feel like we're if a push is drawn and kills that big champion, I I think uh, Jamie's in a lot of trouble. So. Yeah, I would. We'll see. Yeah, yeah, I name like fatal push yeah. name a lot yeah. here, but yeah, with, without the deck list, a, a lot of people name lightning bolt there, right? I right. Probably, I probably name lightning bolt there. Like, yeah. If you're playing well, a Mardu deck, you probably have four lightning bolts, but maybe. I mean, you still, if you're interested in protecting the big uh, lieutenant, you might still name fatal push anyway in the dark. That's true. That's true. Because that's yeah, that's actually probably true. Yeah, because the lightning bolt doesn't actually do that much. Your the lieutenant is the only thing that really matters. Because yeah, now we can only send lieutenant right because. Mm-hmm. Batter skull it, eats. Yeah, everything else. Yeah. And uh is positive on life. So show right, for so. ten. And then we probably just block with Stoneforge Mystic, right? We I think we're at enough life and we're right. gonna be gaining more with this vigilant attack. Whoa. What? Really? Okay, so we're not doing that. We're blocking with Dark Confidant? Well, we could be dropping blocking the Batter Skull and then re equipping. Oh. That's not uh, great. I mean that's I think that's worse than just jumping and then. Yeah, because we want to. Because this gains the most life. Don't but... really. Li- I think I would have preferred to jump with Stoneforge, right? And then you get to send the Batter Skull next turn to this board of three fours and three threes, and you'd probably get double block that you pick it up. Okay, Kroxa, yeah. this is the thing about Kroxa not affecting the board. Although, if we draw an untapped land with the Kroxa, yeah. we have a 6 6. Um, yeah, this is maybe the, maybe. Well, I was gonna say we'll just make the tokens with Pyromancer, but we can't because we have to equip the Batter Skull. Oh, I, uh, uh, yeah. Okay, I, we can reset the Batter Skull, I guess. Yeah, I guess we're just gonna reset the Batter Skull and do okay. this. If, if this if the okay. Lieutenant continues to be the only creature that can attack, yeah, then this fine. is a stable scenario. Well, not anymore, but uh, it, it's still okay because we still get to yeah. jump out of the Batter Skull or probably at the Dark Confront. I don't know. Um, yeah. Or we're definitely casting this pre-combat. Uh, and then it probably targets Stoneforge Mystic. Is there a reason to target Dark Confidant ever here? Only if, it's, only if you're trying to just think, well, this game is going to continue a couple more turns. I don't want them to catch up on cards. They can't currently cast anything because they need all their mana for whatever they want to do. But uh, yeah, it is Confidant. Okay. So do target Confidant. Okay. Um, fair enough. So if, if the unknown card here... Is uh is a fatal push. It is a big deal. I guess we only have five mana, so we can't really do the batter skull thing. Whoa. Okay. So is this here comes everything? It probably is because the batter skull Jump, blocks. Uh, put, yeah. It's three, short, no, actually, right? it's not three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's twelve. So it looks like three would be where David ends up, but that's not really enough to do anything yeah but, i think that we're I mean, this is a force jump here um yeah. yeah they can't block anywhere but lieutenant and so david ends up at three if i counted right and then what yeah there's what is how does he get out at this point i don't think he can i i can't really That's it. yeah there's no way yeah that was well played by jamie the yeah. um Figuring out that you know their window is there. That's something that um, um, for newer players or um, even players of, of all levels, really, aside from the, the actual top players, like when boards. I don't have a great time of that either. When the board gets cluttered on both sides, and realizing, uh, well, I guess it was mostly cluttered on one side, but realizing instead of attacking with just the biggest creature, I can get in everything, force yep. the block the way I want it to, uh, and then my opponent doesn't have a real out to turn after. And, um, yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, that was some solid play. Uh, it was really impressive. A lot of uh, Jamie's plays didn't match my first instincts, but mm. uh, they they made sense. A, a lot yeah. of them made sense. Like, I was like, oh, we get to play the lieutenant this turn. I think I still would have preferred to play the lieutenant on the turn where we image the bugler, um, because, like, the worst-case scenario is we get a seasoned pyromancer off that image because he's never going to kill his own seasoned pyromancer in response to our thing, because mm. then we just copy lieutenant, and he, he's, you know, that's horrible. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was that uh, was a yeah, cool. I, uh, I thought it was a, a really well played game. 
a cool way to kick off the top eight with uh, yeah, with Jamie having to make some decisions that were not entirely obvious. We're sideboarding here from the Mardu side, which is down a game. Uh, we've got some cards that we're definitely not going to be interested in, like Duress. Yeah, that's uh, uh, that's the end of the bomb, Alpine Moon. None of that's going to do anything. Yeah, um, and then we got some winners. These blood moons are interesting, so I right. want to ask you how you feel about this, Joe. Yeah, uh, I know. So, so I mean, the Colgan's commands, okay. It doesn't kill if you don't have it on turn three. It's not going to kill many things because they grow. Yeah. Uh, Angress Rampage is a vile. one for one. Uh, okay. Yeah, and it does get vile. But it, uh, the it, four blood moons, if you, boy, I mean, if you have, if you slam it on an empty, on an empty board, it's phenomenal. Yeah. It's probably going to lock them out, especially if you have a Colgan's command for your eighth vile, right? Yeah. Um, and but, if you play it on turn five, it does nothing. But yeah, exactly. Let me let me ask you a question. Like, if you have an empty board on your third turn, yeah, and and your opponent's playing humans, would you feel ahead or behind? <laughs> you feel like you're probably gonna win those games anyway. Yeah, right? you're gonna win anyway. That's true. Like they didn't do anything on like. Yeah. But uh, you know, if they only have one creature, then Blood Moon's also pretty good because then you have a, you're managed to find one of your three swamps or whatever. Yeah. Then, you can manage that one creature, and they can't really cast anything. They, they don't really function under Blood Moon unless they tr draw one of their basics, and they don't have fetch lands. They cannot fetch their basics. But yeah. if they draw a vial, they can still function. So I think I would prefer to not see Blood Moons. You could see them on the play that, that's defensible. I think having them on the draw is unacceptable, though. Right. So if, uh, if David wants to play them, it has to be this game. Yeah, it's yeah. it's this game or no game. Uh, Rampage is okay, but uh, Humans is a lot of like random dorky creatures. Like You're going to get a hierarch with it a lot, which sucks. Mm -hmm. We kept the seven with no one drop, and the yeah. strength of Apparition is very far from castable. Well, no one drop is exactly what you want if you have a Blood Moon and the basic swamp to go with it. Yeah, it, it, if if uh, David does have a Blood Moon here, this is this is like the game for Blood Moon, right? Yeah, although there's just no way with two yeah, free have, moons have, and Thalia, there's no way it's going to be in the play. Well, if we take the Thalia and then we just yeah. pat and we just pass on our second turn and, with right. a Doom Blade up. Yeah. Uh, well, not Doomblade because Kite's still yeah, black. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but, you know, uh, Lightning Bolt or Fatal Push or whatever. Uh, we play it, dies in front of the trigger, then we Blood Moon. So yep. it still is it still is a uh, reasonable. Yeah, you're, and that would be an empty, empty board Blood Moon, which is exactly what you said, which is just yep. going to be unrecoverable for Jamie. So let's see yep. if... Uh, now, to do that, then you're right. The Thalia is the only choice if that's the plan. Yeah, uh, and we don't even know if David has brought in Blood Moon, right. so we're, we're just speculating here. Uh, it could be, and this hand is good. I do like this keep. You really want the one drops, but like we're playing, we're playing fair matchup here. Uh, every single card matters a ton, but you're you're so far from double spelling. It's it's a tough call. I think um, it's fine to keep, but hmm. and this is a very disruptive hand, also, which is not That's necessarily true. what I feel like. Jamie's looking for, and there is all it goes, and the land is drawn. We really, so. really wanted to draw like vile champion or hierarch that turn, obviously, but whatever. Um, mm -hmm. That would have swung the game a huge deal. But yeah, we took the Thalia, which is like we like you said, the exact play you make. Ooh, that's that's terrifying. Another land, so we'll be able to cast all our spells on curve, uh, except for the Strike Life Apparition, which we need to name Spirit with both of these territories for. That, that's a Blood Moon. Okay, oh, but no, no removal spell, but we have this uh, this Dark Confidant, and we have like 20 removal spells in our deck, so... This is tough, and we can't... Uh, so if a removal spell is drawn, it's not like... Playing the second Freebooter would protect from that, but there's no way Jamie can do that, because there isn't another spell to take right now. Right, exactly. Um, so, And the card revealed with this Dark Confidant with Stoneforge Mystic, I think that we saw David yeah. tap his mana and realize, oh, I love this attack. Because there's no way that Jamie could ever block. Normally, you, you want to protect your Dark Confidant at all costs in spots like this. But, like, if, if he blocks, he's just... Done. He is, he's done. Like, yeah. all his spells are off. Like, he needs to draw Ether Vial to have a prayer. And, like, <laughs> that, that's not even, like... Like, that's not good. Like, that's not cast. That's not doing anything until you get it to two after mm. you draw this file. We brought an Oriok Champion. Okay, that's good. I mean, a black and red deck... And we can, it's, we brought it in against the black and red deck, which is good. Okay, we named Human, so we're just never casting the Skyclave, which I would like to see us discard that uh, to Herxa, but whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh, do we have a bolt for this? Oh, oh the one, Lady Wolf. The one, Wolf. The one Wolf. 
It's all That's over. It, right? There's, there's no there's, way. There's, there's no way. I mean, he just there's can't no get any spells. He has, two... to, he has to win with a two three. <laughs> I mean, I know there's some small creatures in the smarter deck, but yeah, one two three is not going to beat the whole yeah. deck. No, I, I full I, sixty. I have faith in the Marty deck. Oh, we get to get our planes and now. The white so we can, mana. We can oh. even cast our Stoneforge Mystic oh. next turn. It's it's over. This is done. The Blood Moon on the play. Uh, well managed game. Uh, I think both players played well. I think this keep might have been. A, it's a little sketchy. I think it's fine keep, but the one drops are so important. I don't know. But uh, yeah, th- this game is <laughs> this two three is not going the distance. The Stoneforge Mystic is face up and gets a Batter Skull, and yeah. I don't know if you know, but Batter Skull is much better than a two three. <laughs> David's only chance of losing this game was dying to his own Dark Confidant, which Jamie bounced for him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is... I mean, how many turns are we... What's the basic land count in the humans deck? Is it one for uh, a path to exile? Like, a plains and an island, maybe one mm-hmm. or the other. Um, but yeah. Well, we have a chance. Dark Confidant. Do we? We even I mean, get a Triome untapped. What is this if, nonsense? If we uh, were to hypothetically... Uh, get moto bugs and not be able to gain life off the batter skull the dark confidant dark confidant could in theory kill uh, kill uh kill david although even like then this. even then the dark confidant would have to just it could attack every turn the two three would have to block eventually or and then yeah, just yeah. Us, yeah i don't know blood that was that was good block. that was that was cool so the blood moons absolutely stole that game well stole may not be the right word but absolutely blood moons won that game and we both feel that they probably now have to get boarded out. I, I agree. It's really hard after you play a game like that. that yeah. You just Blood Moon your opponent into the dirt. Like, they're, yeah. like And it wasn't no, even turn no three chance. Blood Moon. No, it was like turn four or whatever. It was turn four. Uh, and it was phenomenal. But like, yeah. but you have to think, David had a seven with no one drop. Okay. And you were on the play. And those two things, basically, yeah. like, it's almost like two time walks, right? Like, <laughs> imagine if he just had two more creatures in play. Mm-hmm. You, you could be in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Uh, what if he had like a good draw? Like he didn't have a good draw. He had like a turn two cast Stormcrow that dresses you guy. You know what I mean? Like that's that's very mediocre, right? Yeah, I mean if there was a hierarchy or a vial there, then that doesn't do it. And we saw when the um, Freebird revealed the hand, um, there wasn't really anything left. It was a Krosa, which just doesn't do anything, and the Blood Moon and some lands. So if the Blood Moon didn't take it down, or if there was a good start, like a hierarchy. Or vile, then that Blood Moon and Croak says does meaningless, and and humans wins that game. So yeah, I I think we agree that that was cool, but need a new plan to win going second in game three. I agree. It's it's a huge deal that's often underrated by a lot of people. Um, it, it's maybe okay, like in some builds. I, I didn't really flesh out like what card you need to have in and what card you have out. And so maybe if we have a bunch of bricks. Oh, this hand is phenomenal. This is a snap keep from from Jamie. Nobody ever mm-hmm. in this hand. So good. Um, yeah, so, yeah. okay, Blood Moon plan, not going to work, but sure, we'll, see what, we'll see what David goes with. But Stoneforge into Pyromancer, whatever else stuff, it could be okay. Yeah, no, I mean, if we just go, man, this, this hand is really tough to beat. It's strong. Both players have cup seven. This hand is so, so good, and this Null Hierarch, like, that's another way that we can function under Blood Moon if we have this, if this thing mm-hmm. manages to survive, and which, I mean, how is Blood Moon even getting into play with Thalia and... Well, okay, no, you know let me retract that. Because last game, there was two free bursts of Thalia and the Blood Moon absolutely made it into play. That's true, yeah. So, <laughs> okay, well, we have the Apparition with the Ziggurats, so we're good. I like playing the Lieutenant here, or the, not the Lieutenant, not, do not play the Lieutenant. I like playing the Thalia here for sure. Uh, playing the Freebooter is, like, really rough because a lot of times you're just going to look at his hand and it's just two or three removal spells, right? Mm-hmm. So now you might as well, like, and you just take one and it, 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 nothing really happened. But like, you actually tax uh, tax David here on with the Thalia by leaving mm-hmm. on it. So I think this is smart. We are going to want to draw land because one spell a turn uh, is not great because, uh, you know, we'll, we'll start, David will start double spelling soon. Soon. Well, we're not, we're not, not as the is still on the board, but... Yeah, I mean, we're probably going to kill a Thalia and then maybe do something like two or three turns from now. But and we're not really close to double spelling over here unless we draw runner lands, right? Yeah. And then even then, it's like Lieutenant plus uh, plus copy, which is actually pretty good. So never mind. If we draw two lands, we're... But we don't have that much on the board already. So I don't know. I could easily see uh, this game going either way. don't have much on the board already. It's, it's turn two, and we played a creature yeah, on turn yeah, yeah, and yeah. on turn two. What more do you want? I want, I want Vile. Yeah. I want to violate a one drop, and I want a Thalia also, and then I want to untap, and I want to violate a two drop, and then cast a three drop. I want to do that, well, and I, so. I want our opponent to cast no spells in the interim. I want that to happen. 
<laughs> I want them to roll over and die to the perfect. That's the way I feel too. I I always like watching sports. I never need a comp- if I'm rooting for one team. I never need a competitive game. I want my team to win by fifty every single time. And if the other team's entire defensive line gets injured in the first quarter, that's fine too. I do yeah, not I, need fair play if my team is you know, has the option of winning. Yeah. I, I'm actually rooting for anybody here. Although I will say it's hard to not root for the player who you're watching play, right? You, you, you kind of put yourself in their shoes, right? Uh, and I, I think Jamie's played really well. And so I, I feel, I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure David has also played well. Um, I, I'm not I rooting know. for anybody here either. I'm just saying from your, your point of the, you know, you're the unbiased, you know, the blowout. That's fine. That's what we're, yeah, yeah. that's what you're looking for sometimes. So we do have, okay, we're fetching the land. So the pace has slowed down quite a bit here. And yeah, I doubt yeah. it's on which land to fetch. So David's probably trying to decide what uh, what he wants to cast. It's like uh, David's a tough choice here in chat. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, these opening sequences against the creature decks matter a ton. Uh, just making sure your removal spells all line up right. Uh, mm-hmm. it, like, you, you need everything to line up against the right thing, right? You, like, you... And you need to leave them with the worst thing every time, which sounds really simple. But like sometimes you use the fatal push uh, on a thing because it's more mana efficient. Uh, or I'm sorry, you use an abrupt decay on a thing because it's more mana efficient than a fatal push. But then you want to kill a creature that costs four and you don't have a vault, right? And mm-hmm. you sort of lined up your things wrong. And so, you know, balancing mana efficiency versus lining up all that stuff right can be really tough. And so I don't, uh, and you know, in the early turns and stopping development and limiting how far Jamie can get ahead is just so critical. So I don't blame, uh, okay, this 1-3 is nice. It, it yeah. locks the 2-1 very well. Uh, if we draw a land, we can apparition it. I'm not sure if that's the play, but we, okay. Drew a third ziggurat, so. And playing the swamp, whether or fetching the swamp, whether that is relevant to David's plan or not, it's got to at least trigger Jamie to think about the Blood Moon. A hundred percent. I mean, it's on uh, Jamie's radar here. Um, although it's not castable next turn because of uh, right. Because of Thalia, yeah. But just it's just you just have to think about you know whether it could be there. Where I mean, that could just be David just screwing her with him. And he spent a lot of time thinking about thinking about that land. It probably is nothing related to that, but it's something that you can if you can force your opponent to waste mental energy in fear. Of something you're not even having your deck anymore. That's why not. Yeah, right. I mean, all right. So there is Triome. Okay, so, so we can yeah, only I... cast a one mana non-creature spell here, which is yeah. not what you want to do on turn three. Right. So I wonder if some of the indecision last turn was David choosing whether to play the two drop or whether to play the Triome. And. Jamie did draw the running lands, like you were saying, so he yeah. does have the ability to throw out two spells here, and this... And now we're the ones double-spelling first, which right. is, um, I was talking about, it's just, it's so important with humans, you just want to cast two spells, like, and as soon as you start casting two spells a turn, it's great, and if your opponent starts casting two spells a turn before you, it's really bad, it's like, really, really bad. Okay, Freebooter's in. Let's see what David's working with. Okay, that's a pretty good hand. Yeah, uh, the thought season isn't great, uh, but we're going to have to push something for sure here. Yeah, this is uh, this is good. That That's the kind of hand that we need for sure to... Uh, <laughs> to win this game. Yeah, that thought season is, is basically uh, a 1 1 token with a cantrip yeah, when the Prime Rancher gets cast. Yeah, that, I, I don't think that thought season is getting cast this game. <laughs> that seems uh, unlikely to me. All right, so now we're. Okay, so we're. Okay, I don't love casting right. this. Would you, play, we would you be playing image, Lieutenant here? Yeah, I mean, if you cast yeah. the image, he just pushes the Lieutenant, and then we're copying a blank apparition, which is. That sounds horrible, right? Like, yeah. And now we're probably. And now David's in a spot where he kind of has to push the Freebooter um, and then push the Thalia, but that's going to cost him extra mana because then you don't want you want usually want to kill the Thalia first so you can do the other stuff cheaper but mm-hmm. now we're out of removal spells if we push the Thalia so and that also means that the Thalia gets to get in for three points oh I guess we're just gonna go for the Thalia okay maybe I missed saw I need another removal spell in hand or something 
No, I don't think so. The hand. Oh, it's just gone. Okay, okay, so the hand should be Fatal Push, Thoughtseize, Pyromancer. Okay, there's one card I don't know. It might be a land. So it's Fatal Push, Pyromancer, Bob, Thoughtseize. Oh, and okay, then, Dark Town Thought. That's what I missed. Yeah, and then we're going to draw a card here. Yeah. So if we played Pyromancer here, we'd probably pitch Thoughtseize and Dark Confidant. Yeah, Dark Confidant is rough when you're so far behind. Uh, the Pyromancer is actually really nice because, like, we don't want to send this Apparition anymore because we can either double block it with tokens or we can block it with Season Pyromancer on its own. And then we can't really get this Lieutenant beyond 3-3 unless we draw a way to do so. Um, and so we'll be able to, like, threaten to double block that. We're doing something with Black Black here, though. Fatal Push to Thalia. Okay. Okay. Are we gonna Thoughtseize? Because if we okay, I mean, that's that's fine. There's yeah, I mean, might eat my words here, and we might actually get something out of Thoughtseize. Which was okay, a lamb was drawn, but yeah, the board is pretty stable. If yeah, okay, okay. Uh, so if we draw like a Mantis Rider or a Lieutenant, it's really really good. We drew okay, perfect. Hey, you've perfect. been begging for Intervile the whole match. Perfect. There it is. God. <laughs> Finally, so now... Will Kruger gets his key card. Let's see if it helps Jamie. Yeah, the key card, Ether Vial on turn five. That is exactly yeah. what I was talking about. Uh, the perfect, perfect time for Ether Vial to shine. Well, it's good against the turn five Blood Moon. It is. It is good against the turn five Blood Moon. Uh, so I okay. guess now we get to turn the, the yeah. Okay, the Bob and the Thoughtseize into. Yeah. Right, we use the Bob and whatever we drew this turn into some tokens. Uh, we turn Inquisition, which is obviously nothing. Yep. Um, and now it's stable. I mean, David, it's stable. David has two cards in the hand, and he's ahead on the board. Yeah, I, 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 I meant stable. for for Mardu, uh, the Mardu player. They are, yeah. they're no longer under much duress. Uh, yeah. Or well, I, 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 like I mean, you said, yeah. I sorry, I thought you meant stable. I, I was thinking that you were thinking that the uh, each fire on play was equivalent to the two cards in David's hand. Oh which, no, you know, no, 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 no. Maybe, no, no, no. maybe this, it's, game, this game state is not at parity at all. Uh, I know you value Ether file quite heavily, though. I do, I do. Right here, it's not great. It did give this champion flash though, which is yeah. worth almost nothing. So we have that going for us, right? Um, no, I, I would expect uh, the only the way that Jamie gets back into this game is like either one Mantis Rider somehow goes unchecked for three attacks, yeah. or he draws two Mantis Riders. Yeah, um, I agree. Mantis Rider is the key right now. I guess there's other like General Kudro would be not. I mean, pumping your stuff more. It, it would doesn't be okay. pump the it's Just like. What's that? I mean, it doesn't even pump the apparition because it's a spirit. Yeah, I know. So, like, it's just like, Kudra's okay. And, man, David didn't even play a land. So he's probably just sitting on three spells. Yeah. You can hope that they're all Thoughtseizes and Inquisitions. Uh, that seems unlikely to me. But he's got all his colors. I think he can cast every spell on his deck. Your planes. Okay. The, all right. Vile planes. You are all set for the Blood Moon. Yeah, I mean, we are ready. We are not losing See, the Blood Moon. I'm kind of surprised the young David. Pyromancer, or I mean, I'm sorry, the seasoned Pyromancer didn't attack last turn. I feel like, I mean, I know Jamie's at 20. I'm I'm never attacking here. Not really. Not in that spot if I'm David. Like I, the long game just it belongs to you, right? Like yeah. you just want to sit here and you, you don't want to get punked out by him ripping a Manus Rider. You want him to have all the best blocks you can. Like yeah, the two damage is so not like I don't know. And you know if if uh, let's say Jamie draws a lieutenant, right? Uh, yeah. Let's lieutenant. Oh, well, that would then, be bad. And then you can't make the right double blocks or whatever. Yeah. Like you're you're just so much more limited. Um, so I would on the be, other hand, Jamie could be at 18 right now. I, you know, you raise a good point, uh, and I, I would argue that Jamie being at 18 would be strictly better than him being at 20. But uh, I don't know. They're pretty much the same. Yeah, they're pretty much the same. Yeah, you're right. David's going to win this game by massively taking over the board, and there's no reason to risk anything. I think I would have played the planes because of Kroxa, by the way, uh, or Liliana the Veil potentially, but that's pretty small. Liliana also probably minuses. Yeah. Okay. So, seven life is enough for Dark Confidant, although that, that is a plan. Like, if we draw a Mantis Rider here, and then sure. and then we flip a two off this Bob, then he's down to two, and then it gets closer. That assumes that David doesn't have any removal spells. Um, we also think that he likely sandbagged that land last turn, right? Because he uh, played this Dark Confidant. He would have cast a Dark Confidant 100% of the time last turn, so he probably sandbagged this Bloodstained Mire. Might have sandbagged mm -hmm. more lands, but that seems unlikely. I mean, running out of this confidant certainly does not. It's not safe. It's not that much life to play with. No, and I would not have minded not fetching here just to have the right. life. Like you can get a, a mountain with it later. Like you got a mountain now. Like you just get a mountain later after you decide if you. Oh, we're casting a Kaya's Kyle. 
or Kolygon's command or, or something. Um, gain four sack here. Oof. Well, that that takes care of the champion. I yeah, think. that's really uh, good. And then we go. Oh, we're gonna. Okay, I think we've gotten rid of the champion, but I also don't think that there's any winning alliance anymore. So. Yeah, Oof, that's so much more life. Well, there that's went a, three. Well, that's, a, that's a three, but also yeah. that means that he drew a three mana spell, which are generally pretty good. So. You know. All right, season pyromancer again. Well, so. Okay, hmm, more lands are getting played. Yep, so I assume we're just going to discard like a Thoughtseize or something here. Maybe Inquisition, I don't know. Some dead card. Turn it into a 1-1. One, one. Draw two cards. Draw Blood Simire. Blood, Blood okay, Simire. so the, the, that's where the Dark Confidant was played, just because David didn't actually have anything. Yeah, he did sandbag uh, some lands on one of those turns that I did not... Now we're getting really aggressive. This is probably good. If we, if, so I want to have really good blocks if uh, Jamie rips Lieutenant. I don't want to have to be chumping. I want to be able to make the right double blocks. Mm -hmm. And I think that's true. Okay, we drew Ryder. Okay. 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 So we don't have any information on David's cards other than they're like not Kroxa. They're not Lily out of the Veil, basically. He didn't play them on his main phase. Mm -hmm. um, it seems reasonably likely that, um, that they're removal spells, which is not great. Yeah, and they're both fresh. They could be lands. They were both freshly drawn cards. They could be, and a land was played. Could be, I mean, more any additional Dark Confidence wouldn't be cast, so that could be, yeah, that's going to trigger. Stone Forge, one, two, three, four, six. Uh, let's see. What equipment are we playing besides Battle Skull? Uh, we I think have... we have Feast and Famine. Okay, so that's not going to... If there was another land, it's probably not... No, never mind. It wouldn't be worth the... Game's close. Okay. You're, I mean, it's it's possible. Yeah, it's is it over? Oh my god! Oh my they god! Cannot stop the flyer, and that wow. is end. Match. Wow. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. So yeah, sometimes <laughs> sometimes things go don't, don't go the way you expect. Obviously, the power of the Ether Vial inspired the team. Yeah, and, you know, uh, I think that game actually would have been unwinnable without Ether Vial. Uh, I, I really, it really just carried the game. Oh boy, uh, that was. I mean, well, I, I think, I feel like twenty seconds before the game turned, we talked about how really th there weren't any outs left here, and and there you go, Dark Confidant combined by a couple of dead draws, a Pyromancer into a couple more dead draws, and that's it. That was uh, that was fun. That was a good match. Um, Margaret Pyromancer stole a game with the Blood Moon plan like we thought might happen. And then whether it got boarded out or not, which it probably did, didn't show up in game three. And yeah, did not uh, did not work out. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring up the brackets game. where we're at. Like, yeah, that was a fun one. If, uh, if David, like, it's so unlikely from that position. Because, like, if David draws a removal spell in the top, like, five cards of his library, uh, and it or... Uh, Jamie doesn't draw Mantis Rider, the game's over. But instead, he just didn't draw a removal spell in top five cards, and uh, Jamie drew the Mantis Rider, or David drew the Mantis Rider. I don't know, but yeah. one of them drew the Man human player drew the Mantis Rider, and Marty player bricked on. And it was, it was, God, it was, yeah, it wasn't even. It waited as long as it possibly could have, too. Yeah. All right. Bring the the show us where we're at. Um, we just watched Jimmy Robertson defeat David Goldfarb, and then. I believe yeah. we are expecting, or based on the matchups, we're expecting Sean Ryder to defeat um, Tarts to Wins, Dredge deck. Um, I think we disagreed on the 1-8 matchup. I thought, well, we didn't disagree, but you thought being for, going first was enough to push Burn up over maybe a yeah. slightly unfavorable matchup. I think being on the play is, is yeah. going to be really good. And 4-5, uh, and I don't really feel confident either way. I thought the removal might be too, uh, too much to overcome, but... You made a lot of good points about how Green White can protect its combo. So, if we have the top four slide, let's take a look at who won. Here we have uh, okay. Tron Ryder playing Modern Green. Tron did win, uh, as we expected, and we'll face Jamie Robertson playing Humans. Humans getting to go first. Drew Christensen playing Burn, who got to go first in potentially not a great matchup, is able to win over the Naya uh, mid-range deck. And Josh Feliciano with Blood Control did defeat the Green White Heliod deck. So yep. here are our four remaining players of the event. Viewers, if you want to take a minute and figure out who you think is going to win, uh, Will and I are going to step away. We'll run a quick break, and we'll come back, and we'll tell you who we think is going to win, and then we'll move on to the top.